Hi, this video is a quick overview on how to use Easy Archives and Easy Documents by PXMSoft. I've logged into Success Factors and I'm on the main page now. From here, we need to access the Document Management Dashboard. This can be done in, in a variety of ways depending on how your administrator set it up. In this case, we can access it through this drop down menu in the top. We could search for it, or we can use this tile that we've placed on our main page. This is the document management dashboard. Each of these tiles will be available to you depending on your role in the company. This means that, for example, a base level employee will not have access to HR functions and similar. We're going to start off with the easy archives part of this. So I'm going to access my documents first. This is an option that should be available to every employee to view their own documents or documents that pertain to them. In this case, we can see we have all of the documents that pertain to us. I'm logged in as Richard Reed. I'm the leadership team in UK and from the executive office. And here we can see a bunch of different documents. We can search for documents using the file names and metadata. We can sort by category or we can sort by document type or a combination of category and document type. If we select documents, we can also download the selected documents. If a document is a PDF or an image file, we can also preview it in the application without having to download it. If we want to upload documents, we simply click the Upload Documents button. From here, we need to choose what type of document our document is. So in this case, let's upload a personal employee document certificate. We click the Browse button or use the drag and drop feature to simply upload it. We can then select that we want to upload this document and click the upload button. If we're uploading multiple documents, we could switch between what document type or category we want to upload them as so that we don't have to drag them in separately. If we then go back to view our documents, we can see the document that I just uploaded 12 seconds ago. As a manager, you will have this tab as well in your document browser called my team documents there's also a tile to directly access this from the dashboard in here we can see the people that report directly to us we can view their documents we can upload documents to their user from here we have the same sorting and searching options that we have on our own files we can also trash their files if they are no longer relevant or need to be trashed in the overall document browser, because I am logged in as a VP, I have access to everyone within my area. So in here, I can search for all the employees that I want to. Let's search for the employee we just looked at, which was Martha Manson. I can search for either her first name, last name, her username, her department or division, and it will find her. So from here, it is the exact same as we just saw on the My Team Documents page. Let's move on to Easy Documents. Going back to the dashboard, in here we have the document generator, we have a document generator set up for our recruiting module, and we have some status icons here. Let's start with the normal document generator. Generating a document is as simple as choosing the employee you wish to generate a document for. I'm going to be using the same example that I showed you before. Martha Manson. I'm going to select Martha Manson. I'm going to select that I want to generate an employment contract for her. I want it to be in English and I want it to be effective dated from the 4th of November. Actually, let's move it to the 1st of December just so it's on the 1st of the month. Creating the work area will take some time to load because it needs to collect all the data that is included in the template. It's now warning me that we are missing some variables in order to generate this contract. And I can have the option to either generate the document and ignore that we're missing variables, which will be visible, or we can replace the variables before we generate the actual document. I'm going to choose to replace it. In this case, we can see that it's the bonus amount that is not registered for Martha. So we need to input what her bonus should be in case she gets a bonus. I'm going to put 5,000 and then click generate document. We can now see all the segments that make up our document. In the top here, we have a locked bar. We can't disable nor edit this bar because it contains our logo, so it shouldn't be editable. We then have a header that contains our company information 
and refers to us as the employer and our employee information. This address and name is pulled directly from success factors. So there's no way to get it wrong. This little icon out here represents that we can edit it. So if something is wrong in our metadata, we can actually correct it. So if the postal code is actually for JS, we can then correct it and simply click display. In the bottom is where we select what we want to start processing. We can set processors by, and we can set up an approver. This is a role that you need to set up or your admins need to set up, sorry. Once you've set up your approvers, you can select them from here. Right now, because I am the only VP in this area, I'm the only one who's set up as a, an approver. So I'm the only one available. You can also set up a separate signer if you're generating the document on behalf of someone else. The set envelopes button allows you to select what attachments you want besides the actual document once it's finished processing. So in this case, we have an example envelope. This contains separate attachments. You can find a guide for how to set this up in our uh, documentation. We can preview our document before we send it for processing to ensure that all the information is correct and we want to see the page layout. So looking here, we can see we have our header that I was talking about our logo, we have our other header with all the information, and then we have all of these segments that we talked about. In here we can see that we are pulling the title correctly, we're pulling the department, Great Britain operations, and the bonus that we input when it asks for it. We go back to make a correction if we need to. By clicking start processing, we're sending it through the document lifecycle management flow. For this, it's set up that it doesn't need any approvals because I didn't set an approver, but it does need two signatures. So this document will automatically pass through the approval step and then go on to get signed, in this case by Richard Reed, which is what I'm logged in as, through a digital signature render. And once that's complete, it'll be sent to Martha for processing as well. Once the document is signed, it will be moved on to EC Archives to be archived under Martha Manson. The document generator for recruiting works much in the same way, besides the fact that you need to also select a requisition and you're searching for a candidate rather than an employee. The requisitions, you can find both the IDs and the names of the requisitions as well as the salaries, so you can make sure that you're choosing the correct one. Otherwise, it functions the exact same way. These four tiles all indicate process status. The inbox here is documents that are awaiting my approval. The document I sent earlier automatically went through since I was the approver for it. These are documents that are pending my signature. If you remember from earlier, it actually said 25 here. And now that I started the document process and we're pending Richard Reed's signature, it says 26 now. The tiles function as shortcuts to this page. This page has both signatures that I've requested and signatures that others have requested. We can sort by this using this status bar. If I select to view all of these and click go, I can view all the documents that I have access to as the VP. I can see who generated the document, who they generated it for, and who's supposed to sign for it. If we go back and select only signatures requested, we can see the document that I tried to generate a few moments ago, that it passed through approval automatically, and that it's now requested. A signature from me. We can see who the mail was sent to and how it works. This was a brief overview of both EC Archives and EC Documents. Hope it's been helpful. If you have any other questions, please do not hesitate to reach out. Otherwise, consult our documentation page on Confluence.